Use a triple integral to find the volume of the solid bounded above by x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 16 and bounded below by z equals the square root of x squared plus y squared. So let's discuss the upper bound. What is this? Do we recognize it? x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 16. That is a sphere of radius 4 centered at the origin. So let's take a look at a picture of that. x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 16. There's our sphere of radius 4. Now, what is that in spherical coordinates? What would that be? Well, sphere of radius 4. Rho equals 4 would be the equation of that sphere in spherical coordinates. Now, the next thing I have is z equals root x squared plus y squared. Let's do some analysis there. So let's notice right off the bat that z has to be greater than or equal to 0. We have no values below 0 here. So the range of my function will only include values from 0 and above. Let's go ahead and square both sides z squared equals x squared plus y squared. Does this enable you to see the relationship? Well, in the yz trace, which is looking at it straight on, we have intersecting lines. And in the xz trace, looking at it from left to right, we have intersecting lines. So what sort of a situation do I have where I have intersecting lines looking in both directions? And the answer is something like this which is an elliptic cone, although this time it's a circular cone just because those cross sections are all circles. But z is only greater than or equal to zero. So I only have the upper half of that cone. So let's look at that picture. So here's the cone and we want the fence below the lower boundary to be the cone and the upper boundary to be the sphere. So I need to find out where these things intersect. And looking at our picture here, you can see that that appears to be a circle. Where those things intersect will be my range of integration that I need. So how do we determine that? Well, when do these things intersect? So identify the point of intersection. So I have x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 16 and I have z equals the square root of x squared plus y squared, keeping in mind z has to be positive. Well, if I square both sides, then I get z squared is x squared plus y squared. And then I can substitute for this z squared using that. So I get x squared plus y squared, substituting this, z squared is x squared plus y squared equals 16. So now I get 2x squared plus 2y squared is 16. Or x squared plus y squared is 8. So that's the shadow of the intersection in the xy plane, which is what we need, right? That will define our region of integration. If you're interested to see what the z value is, then of course, z squared is 8. So z would be plus or minus root 8 but we're only using the positive values again because z is greater than or equal to zero. So z is two root two. So we have a circle of radius the square root of eight with a height of two root two. That's what the intersection is. Now, how does that work for me? So here's my region of integration, x squared plus y squared less equal to eight. And you'll notice for my sphere, I'm saying, Draw that sphere only on that region and for z greater than or equal to zero. So that's where this is at. So if rho is zero, it's here, and then it grows, 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 until it hits what? Until it hits this red cap, until it hits rho equals four, because this red cap is rho equals four. So if we're thinking about the lower thing to the upper thing, if we're starting at the origin, origin rho is zero, and then the cap will be rho equals four. But now if I add in that other piece, so here is that z squared equals x squared plus y squared, or better yet, z equals the square root of x squared plus y squared. Now that is also restricted to x squared plus y squared less equal eight. 
So this is what we need. This will be our region of integration. And we want to find the volume of this thing. So we have this portion, which is in the plane. We have this portion, which is a 3D figure. And what are we asked to do? We want to find the volume of the solid. So let's have a conversation about how we find volume. So remember that a triple integral of some function would normally find a four-dimensional volume. To make the triple integral equal a volume, I've got to take the triple integral over 1 dV, over our three-dimensional ball, B. That's how I'm going to find the volume. But we need to remember what dV is. In rectangular coordinates, dV is dz dy dx. In spherical coordinates, dV is rho squared sine phi d rho d phi d theta. Now we want to find the volume of that solid. So looking at our rule here, the volume will be the triple integral of 1, dV being rho squared sine phi d rho d phi d theta. Rho first. What does rho range from? Now, do you recall our picture? Rho started at zero. How far did it grow until it hit that sphere or hemisphere? Rho starts at zero. It grows. You imagine the stick going, going, going until boom, till it hits the red thing. And the equation of the red thing is rho equals four. So it starts at rho equals zero and it grows until rho equals four. So rho ranges from zero to four. Next up, we've got to think about phi. How is phi working? Let's visualize it first. So phi starts at the North Pole. So maybe we can take a look at it straight on this way, right? Phi is the angle with the North Pole. And then it comes down this way. So here phi is zero. Maybe here phi is 20 degrees. Here maybe it's 30 degrees. And then how many degrees is it or radians when it finally gets here? So do we see how that's some angle? Can we identify what that angle is? What does phi range from? Phi certainly starts at zero, starts at the North Pole. Boom, until it hits that value. Can we find out what that value is? The equation of that cone was z equals root x squared plus y squared. So z squared equals x squared plus y squared. So z equals r. So let's start there to see if that works for us. And then we have our favorite triangle that we work with with spherical coordinates. So here's our relationship. If we're going to deal with z first, that's adjacent over hypotenuse. So cosine of phi is z over rho. So rho cos phi equals z. And sine phi is r over rho. So rho sine phi equals r. Now my equation here says z equals r. So z is rho cos phi equals r equals rho sine phi. Well, what happens there? The rows divide out, I get cos phi equals sine phi. And when does cos phi equal sine phi? 45 degrees when phi is pi over four. So if we go back and look at that picture, can we believe that? B starts at zero, gets to pi over four, 45 degrees. That seems pretty reasonable to me. But again, that's all the way through. Starts at Z, heads down. We make the angle with Z until we get to 45 degrees, pi over four, then we hit the cone. And that is it for our surface. So indeed, phi goes from zero to pi over four. Now we needed to talk about theta. What does theta range from? So again, let's look at our picture to try to determine our values for theta. Our metaphor is longitude, but we see this goes all the way around. 
we don't have just a fraction of this piece. We have the full two pi radians. So theta is ranging from zero to two pi. So we have the triple integral set up. Let's go ahead and simplify it. So here's where we start. So let's do our innermost inner integral. Receives sine phi as a constant. So sine phi comes out in front. The antiderivative is rho to the third over three. Evaluated as rho goes from zero to four. Plugging that in, we get innermost inner integral is sine phi times four to the third over three minus zero to the third over three, which gives me 64 over three sine phi. And then we'll replace that in the innermost inner integral here. So here's what we get. So next up, we work on the inner integral. Small correction there, of course, 64 thirds sine phi. Then it's got to go d phi, d theta. So my inner integral here is this portion. We're taking the integral from 0 to pi over 4 of 64 thirds sine phi, d phi. The antiderivative of that is negative cos phi. Continuing the inner integral is negative 64 thirds cos pi over 4 minus cos 0. which is negative 64 over three. Cosine of pi over four is root two over two or one over root two minus cos of zero is one. So doing the arithmetic, our inner integral is negative 32 root two over three plus 64 thirds, which I'll just write it with the 64 thirds first, 64 thirds minus 32 root 2 over 3. That's my inner integral, and that will get replaced in the red parentheses above before we finish the problem. So there is our substitution. So our antiderivative is just 64 over 3 minus 32 root 2 over 3 theta as theta ranges from 0 to 2 pi. Looking in those values, we get this. And then doing the arithmetic, volume is 64 times 2, 128 pi over 3 minus 64 root 2 pi. 64 root 2 pi over 3. Maybe we should get a common denominator and say 128 minus 64 root 2 pi, all divided by 3. 